In this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to screen your level of core stability. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump up the hand, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. In trouble, young adult, I've done some that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like a blessing for our Nikes lost. Caught in the trance and this manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy world. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Aaron Horshig, and this is episode 32 of the Ask Squat You Show. Hope your training is going really well this week. Thanks for stopping by the show. Let's get to today's question. John writes, Hi, Aaron. If possible, can you please post the two core stability tests onto your YouTube video account as some of my team members from Passage Hurling Club are not on Instagram? Thanks. So if you've been following Squat University for a while on Instagram, you may have seen recently a few posts that I put up that have walked you through ways to screen your level of core stability. What I wanna to do today is make a little bit longer YouTube video with a little bit more in-depth analysis into each of those screens, maybe show you one or two more that can bring some value to you guys to understand how to screen your level of core stability. All right, so this first screen is going to be in a push-up position. You don't need your feet next to each other, so you can spread them out into a comfortable position. From here, we're then going to do a couple different movements and see for what happens at the low back, at the spine and pelvis connection. So to start, we're gonna get in a push-up position and then you're going to touch one elbow and back down and see what happens. So push-up, okay? From here, raise and back down. What's happening at the pelvis? Now, if, if someone has poor core stability, what you're gonna see is a twisting of that low back or a shift, an excessive shift at that upper body. So from here, to be able to go over, some people will naturally have to shift all the way over or as they come up, their hips will shift or their low back will move excessively. So can the athlete perform this without any excessive shift or rotation of the low back? Now you can also perform this with a leg lift. So, be in that push-up position and raise one leg at a time and see what happens at the low back and pelvis. So from here, we're gonna raise up and back down. Now, can that athlete do that without excessively arching that low back? We're looking for most of that motion to come from the hip joint and the lumbar spine to remain in that relatively neutral spine with a slight arch the entire time. So that's the first screen that you can do. Now the big thing I wanna get across to you guys is that any exercise in itself can also be used as a screen. So for example, in the FMS, the functional movement screen by Gray Cook and the rest of his team, they use a bird dog exercise as an assessment of someone's level of core stability. So what you can do is get down into the all force position, perform the bird dog and see what happens at the low back. Ideally, we're looking for someone to be able to have that movement with the arm and the hips without any low back excessive movement. So from the all fours position, we're gonna have a slight arch in that low back and can we go out and back without excessive motion at the low back. Now, ideally we want to keep that back flat, but a lot of times you'll see this. You'll see that low back arch, you'll see that person twisting side to side or when they come back in and sweep underneath, You'll see an excessive round. So using the bird dog can be a great way to analyze someone's level of being able to move their arms and their hips and how well they can keep that low back in a neutral position. Because a lot of times, as soon as someone moves that arm or their hip, they'll naturally break down at the spine. And we know that core stability is not just the ability to hold a movement like a plank, but the ability to keep our spine in a neutral position while we're moving on top of it. So that can be another great way to analyze someone's level of core stability. Now the next exercise that I showed on Instagram is a very simple hip circle exercise. And what we're doing is we're looking for someone's ability to maintain a neutral brace spine. So they're gonna stand on one foot, you're gonna have the person raise their leg up, go out to the side, and then back down in a circular motion. Now what we're looking for is does that person maintain that neutral brace spine? Do they come up? and out to the side and back down and their spine stays the same or as soon as they raise up, do they falter into a flex position? Do they twist to the side and do they lose their balance? So someone's level of core stability should allow them if they have good core stability to come up, to go over and back down and have no movement from that lumbar spine. Now obviously this takes into account someone's balance but if you remember, core stability again is not the ability to just look at this part of your body. It's everything tied together. And the better core stability someone has 
and their ability to maintain that neutral spine, the better ability someone will have to balance their entire body. Movements like this are often seen as well in the FMS screening. There's a movement where they have someone hold a dowel on their back and they'll go up, have to step over something, up again, and then back down, looking for their ability to maintain that neutral brace spine and be able to come up and over with their leg movement without any excessive twisting or bending over. So really the big thing I want you guys to understand is that any exercise or movement can become a core stability assessment in itself. You don't have to spend a lot of money on some fancy tools to be able to assess someone's core stability. You just have to have an understanding of what you're looking for in each movement and that really makes a good core stability assessment. Once you're done with those simple body weight movements, it's then important to look at your level of core stability under a load. So perform your basic deadlifts, your squats under load and watch your body and see how it responds. A lot of times you may look really good with simple body weight movements with good level of core stability. However, it's not until you add a good amount of load that your body eventually breaks down. So understanding where that happens during your movements can be very, very helpful in you constructing a good core stability program to help you reach that level of core stability and push past it and allow your body to gain more stability which will then help your technique and allow you to reach even bigger and bigger weights. All right, so there you go. That's a quick walkthrough of a couple of the core stability assessments that I posted on Instagram a few weeks ago. A number of those I got from the book Gift of Injury by back expert Dr. Stuart McGill and elite powerlifter Brian Carroll. I highly recommend getting this book. It's a great way uh, to understand your back and how to get through a back injury, uh, especially for those who are in strength sports. Uh, my question of the day now is, have you guys done any other core stability assessments? Uh, and if so, did you like them? I wanna know your answers in the comment section below. I hope you guys are enjoying these Ask Squat You shows. If you are, please like, comment below, let me know. Uh, I'm sharing with all your friends. Uh, and as well, subscribe to my channel. Uh, until next week, guys, happy squatting. Hometown hero on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to.